Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shah Weekly. In this video, we'll be learning about what exactly are lazy properties. Now, let's go ahead and check out this code. We have an exam structure over here, which also have a level. Level is an enum, which contains three different cases, easy, medium, hard. Whenever you ask for questions, it's going to return you an array of questions as a string. But whenever you ask a question, it's going to also sleep for five seconds. So you can consider this an API call or some sort of uh, expensive operation. Depending on the level, we're going to return you easy questions, medium questions, or hard questions. Let's go ahead and run this. You can see that right now I am trying to fetch the easy questions, and it takes five seconds to print out exam.questions or to evaluate exam.questions. This is because we have sleep on line number 16. Now, if I go over here and wait for one second, or even if I don't wait, but let's just go ahead and say wait for one second, and somebody says, hey, I want the exam questions again. Then again, you're going to see that it is going to be evaluated, meaning it is going to take five seconds, then wait for one second, and then five seconds again. We are not really waiting for one second, but we can go ahead and say sleep for one second. There we go. Okay. So let's run this. It's going to wait for five seconds because the first time we are getting exam questions, it's going to take five seconds. Then we wait for one second. Then again, it's going to take five seconds for our questions to come up. You can see that. So every time we ask to get the questions, it's always going to take five seconds, even though the question itself has not really changed. It's the same exact questions. So how can we solve this particular problem? Well, one of the ways to solve this problem is to mark this particular property, which is a lazy uh, questions property, as lazy. And when we mark something as lazy, it's basically a closure. So we'll put an equal to sign. And right at the end of the property, we're going to go ahead and call it. Another thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that our exam is actually var. Because the lazy property is going to be set only once. It's going to change something, like the value will be changed. And next time you are going to ask for that particular property, it is going to return you the same result. In other words, if you ask something, let's say exam.questions, then all of this code, since this is a lazy property, is going to be evaluated, it's going to run first time. And then when you ask the questions again, that give me the questions, this is not going to get called again, it's just going to return you. So lazy property, only the body is gonna run one time, and next time it's just going to give you the result instantly. And we can try it out. Let's go ahead and try to run this again. You will see the first time it's taking five seconds. Now we're going to wait for one second. And we got the result instantly. So we didn't really have to wait on line number 33 for five seconds to get the result because this property was already been accessed and it was already populated with the result. We were able to get the result instantly. So this is great. So lazy properties are actually great for situations where you think that to get the value of the property, it is going to take some time. It can be used for many different things. Over here, we are trying to say that this is an API call, but you can use it for a MapKit location manager or location or core location framework. You can use it for location manager. You can use it for many different things that you think that to evaluate the property first time, it is going to take some time. So you can use lazy properties over here. Now, one of the things about our lazy property is that we can go ahead and assign the questions over here. Let's say A plus B or something. And we don't really want the user to be doing that. This is an easy fix. We can go ahead into our property and I can say private set. And private set basically means, let's go ahead and put it at the right place, not over here. Private set basically means that the questions property can only be set from inside the exam structure. So now you can see that online number 35 is actually giving you an error 
it's saying that the question setter in is inaccessible. All right. Okay, so now here's the question, it's a fun question for you. What's going to happen if I do something like this? I'm going to go ahead and say let hard exam is equals to exam. Now exam is a structure, so it's going to just copy over and hard exam dot level is hard. We need to make sure that the level can be set again. So we're just going to go ahead and say var instead of let. It's going to go away, hopefully, the, the error message. And we will take this as var also. OK, so what's going to happen over here? We created the exam on line number 29. We accessed the exam. We did var hard exam equals to exam. Then we set the level to hard. Okay, so it's hard. Now, what do you think it's going to happen if I try to do this? Print exam or hard exam dot questions. I'm not going to run this. This is your job. You will run this. But before running this, can you guess what is going to happen? Will this hard exam dot questions, is it going to be hard questions, which is this one? Or is it going to be easy questions, which is on line number 20? And why? If it's going to be easy question, then why would it be easy question? I'm, I mean, on line number 33, I'm actually setting it as hard. And if it's going to be hard, then why would it be hard? So go ahead and write your answer in the comments. And I will post my comment when I have received several answers. Or I will also thumbs up or like your comment if your comment is uh, the one that we are looking for, the answer. So hope you have enjoyed this. This is Lazy Properties in Surf Language. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my Udemy courses. I have a lot of different Udemy courses, including GraphQL, Core Data, MVVM Design Pattern, Surf UI and my Surf UI course, I have also added some videos for iOS 15 and Xcode, the new version, so 13. So make sure to get these courses. The best way to get these courses is to check out the links in the YouTube description and you will be able to get these courses. Thank you so much for your continuous support.